Senator, you're at the center of this uh, negotiation with the president over his social spending and tax bill, a bill, the Build Back Better bill that is not coming up uh, in the Senate before the new year, in part largely because of your reservations. Without you, the leadership doesn't have the votes it needs. So today, right now, what's the state of play? Well, Brett, you know, this is a mammoth piece of legislation, and I had my reservations from the beginning when I heard about it five and a half months ago, and I've been working diligently every day and every minute of every day. I've been working on this, meeting with whether it be the president, President Biden, whether it be Majority Leader Schumer and his staff, whether it would be with Nancy Pelosi, uh, all of my colleagues, I mean, from all different spectrums of, of the political spectrum, if you will, from the right to the left. I've done everything humanly possible. Uh, I've always said this, Brett. If I can't go home and explain it to the people of West Virginia, I can't vote for it. And I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and I have a complicated relationship with Joe Manchin. Right now, I can't stand the man. I feel like he betrayed me, he betrayed West Virginia, his party, he betrayed Joe Biden, but most of all, Joe Manchin betrayed America. But on the other hand, I owe him some of the success because Joe Manchin was the one who made the calls to whomever it was to get my congressional race added to the red to blue list. And once that happened, I began to see fundraising support come at levels I had never seen before. More money came in, more media attention, and at one point, my race was the number one most covered race in the country. And this led to Trump coming down to West Virginia twice to hold campaign rallies for my opponent against me. You see, we sparked something that had never been done before in good old rural West Virginia. And that was because Joe Manchin's phone call. Over the past few weeks, I've been thinking, why did Joe Manchin make those calls for me? We're not friends. We didn't run in the same circles. We didn't even align politically on many things. But then it occurred to me, Joe Manchin did not decide to make those calls for me out of the goodness of his heart. He made those calls because people of West Virginia came together and rallied around me and forced Joe to get involved. People would say things like, hey, Senator Manchin, have you seen this guy? Are you going to help? What are you doing? Let's make this happen. His office was inundated with thousands of calls, and it was because of that pressure that Joe acted. Now, why am I even bringing up this story today? Because, folks, you pressured Joe Manchin before. You came together, you lobbied for something, and you convinced Manchin once. Now, let's do it again. Let's come together and apply pressure campaigns to Manchin and Cinema, and speak loudly and unified for them to vote yes on President Biden's Build Back Better bill. We need to call, we need to email, we need to send letters, we need to hold rallies outside of all their offices. He should not be able to look outside his window unless he sees someone holding a sign saying, vote yes, Joe. The people united will never be defeated, so let's unite. This fight ain't over. The vote has not happened yet, and we need to mobilize, and we need to do that today. We also need to understand that we can't keep doing this by putting all of our eggs in one basket. We need to give President Biden a larger majority so we're not handcuffed to mansion and cinema all the time. For those of you that want to quit, bye. Everyone else still watching, let's do this. Sappers clear the way, airborne on.